When we stop dreaming, we stop breathing. Dreams play an important role in our lives. As many figures in the Bible are said to have been visited by God during their sleep. Then he had another dream, and he told it to his brothers. Listen, he said. I had another dream, and this time the sun and moon and 11 stars were bowing down to me. Welcome to Understanding Your Dreams, presented by Pastor Peter Kansembe from Praise Christian Center. This program has been tailor-made so that you can determine how much attention to pay to the meaning of your dreams. The dream is for the dreamer. Stay tuned. Welcome back to Understanding Your Dreams. We continue looking... Uh, at uh, the body parts as uh, most of us have dreams that we send in and we have questions about the body and as we look at these segments the common ones I trust that the Lord will help us to discern to know what uh, uh, the Lord is saying to us you can also look at it as the seer's word of knowledge or wisdom uh, when the Lord begins to speak to you in these things so in the last segment we focused on the head we looked at the eyes the hair the nose and now we continue, we ended with the hair, we continue with the skull. Someone sent in a dream and they said in their dream they saw this uh, skull. And when they started commanding the skull, uh, it, it became the, the skull of an animal. So of course, that's that, that dream was talking about witchcraft attack. So now we want to understand a skull, just a skull in your dreams. A skull, if you remember in Mark chapter in Mark chapter 15 verse 22 it says they brought him to the place of Gogotha or the place of the skull so now a skull by itself can represent death and that's where they brought him uh, to kill him and so now a skull by itself will represent death or it can represent uh, powers of darkness because a skull is not living it's already dead uh, a, a, a skull that is just a skeleton bones it means the thing that was there has died so now if a skull is following you or talking to you in your dreams you know that is witchcraft or the powers of death or the powers of darkness and then also um, if we read in Judges chapter 9 verse 23 and a certain woman and a certain woman um, and a certain woman cast a piece of a milestone upon Abimelech's head and or to break his cow. So now if a skull is broken, it means uh, that is death because there is no way a person's cow can be broken and they still remain alive. So if the skull of somebody is broken, it is uh, death. But if it's the skull of the enemy that has been broken, then the power of the enemy has been destroyed. So like that one who had a dream, if they set the fire to the skull and bent it, it means that the powers of darkness have been destroyed. So now we continue, we also look at the neck. The neck is what gives support to the head because you can't have a head without a, a, a neck. Every head will have a neck. So now we read in Genesis chapter 27 and verse 40. And it says that, And by the sword shall thy live, and thy shall uh, save thy brother, and it shall come to pass that when thou have, shall have dominion, that you shall break the yoke from his neck. So now, the neck is joined to the head. The neck is what controls the turning of the head. So the, the, the neck can also represent those that are very much attached to you. That influence the way you do things, where you are going to look, what you are going to speak, whether you are going to lift up your head or not. Sometimes it is those very much connected to you. So if the neck is filled with pain, normally I would look at the support staff if whether you are in a church or in a company or whatever you do, who are your support staff? So if that's, those are the ones that hold up the head. So if you are sleeping and there is a lot of pain, you are seeing a neck that is injured. Sometimes you have to look at the support staff. Who is helping me to stay in this position to make things work? Because that is uh, one of the things that it will, it will represent. So now when a yoke is on a neck, a neck that is bound means that the head is also bound. The neck head joins the, the, the head to the body. So once the neck is bound in a chain, the whole life of a person is bound. So a person can have a dream 
they have a yoke around their neck, they have a chain around their neck, that is telling you that there is captivity, there is a form of bondage. It can be a spiritual bondage, it can be a bondage from a habit, it can be a bondage from spells, it can be a bondage from hidden or satanic covenants, it can be a bondage of anything. But as long as you see that yoke on your neck, it is telling you that there is a captivity that is working, controlling and you uh, manifesting in your life. But then the neck does not only represent uh, captivity. There are also positive things because most of the salutations you see in the Bible, you see like in Genesis uh, chapter 45 and verse 14, talking about his brother Benjamin and Joseph, it says he fell, he fell upon his brother Benjamin's neck and wept, and Benjamin upon his neck. So now, when most of the greetings or the salutations that would show compassion, that they would hold the neck of somebody um, in, 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 in this context. So when Joseph saw his brother, he held him by the neck, not by the hand, by the neck, and then he wept and he had compassion. So sometimes it's a compassionate stance. There are times that when you see a person is worried, they will hold themselves sometimes by the head or by the neck because it's showing you that their spirit is low. So you can have a dream, and in that dream somebody is holding their own neck, then you will know that there is something that is troubling them, and they have just held their neck in shock or in wonder. And then again, uh, in um, Ex Exodus chapter 23, verse 27, it says, I will send my fear before you, and I will destroy all the people whom thou shalt come to, and I shall make all their enemies turn their necks. So when somebody turns his neck backwards, it means they have given up on a mission. For the, so for the enemies that uh, these people were coming against, Moses and the children of Israel, because the Bible says they would turn their necks back, because the neck focuses your face in front and your whole system and your whole body in front. So if I have this dream and my neck is turning backward, this means there is a change of mind. There is a change of decision. It means that these enemies would be smitten so much by the power of God that they would no longer uh, be willing to look forward. So it means their support structure, whatever strength they were armed with, now it has been defeated and it can no longer move forward. So now it turns backwards. And so the neck will represent that. And then again, uh, in Exodus chapter 34, verse 20, it says, But the firstling of the donkey you shall redeem with the lamb. And if you do not redeem it, then you shall break the neck. So to break the neck is to kill. So a broken neck, again, is a symbol of death. So if you see somebody in their dream, they have a broken neck. That already is telling you uh, uh, that somebody is uh, being destroyed. In Deuteronomy uh, Chapter 28, verse 48, it says, He shall put a yoke of iron upon your neck until you are destroyed. So the, the neck is very much close to the head. So if it is broken or it is in bondage, it means the headship of that person is uh, in bondage. And then a broken neck, like we've said, it is a symbol uh, of something that is dying or dead. And then also sometimes you can have a dream and that neck in your dream cannot turn. It is so stiff. It is so hard. So you go back to the Bible. In Deuteronomy chapter 31 and verse 27, it says, I know your rebellion and your stiff neck. So if the neck is very stiff in your dreams, you can't even turn your head. You need to ask yourself, maybe I am rebellious. Maybe I am proud. Because a stiff neck or a hard neck, a, a neck that cannot be turned, it, it, it means that no matter what is spoken, no matter what is uh, advised to that person, their face is focused uh, forward in such a way that they cannot turn it stiff. And in this context, it would be rebellion or pride. So sometimes a stiff-necked person in your dream, whether it's you or some other person, it is taking of, of pride, rebellion, and arrogance. And remember in the word of God, rebellion is as the sin uh, of witchcraft. In Second Samuel chapter 4, verse 18, this talks about Eli. And it says that, And it came to pass... When he made mention of the ark of God, that he fell from his seat backwards by the side of his gate, and he broke his neck and died. So the broken neck, like we have said, when the neck is broken, it means death has come in. So if it's the neck of a leader that has been broken, it means the support uh, has died and they can no longer continue. So whatever thing you are seeing that has to do with the headship and the neck, when the support structure is broken, then that system is uh, coming to 
to an end. And then in Songs of Solomon, it says, Thy cheeks are comely with jewels, your neck with chains of God. So it's not always that uh, the chains around the neck will represent evil. In the Song of Solomon, he's praising his bride. She has these wonderful necklaces and they bring out her beauty. And because of that, he is praising her. And then he says, Your neck is like the Tower of David, built with Amari, where on the thousand they hang thousands of shields. So again, this woman now is praised because she is so beautiful. Solomon now compares her to the armies of God. She is strong. She is a mighty warrior. Her tower is like the Tower of David. In other words, it's a defense. It's a reliable fortress. Like I said, the neck gives support to the head. So now he is saying to this woman, she is such a support. Her neck is unwavering. Her neck is strong. In other words, the support to the head, because then the wife would be like the, the neck to the head, since it says the husband is a neck. She is so strong and she's such a mighty defense that she has shields around that no matter how many arrows are shot at that uh, tower, they will not penetrate. So in this case, it is telling you of a confidence somebody will have in those who are in partnership or in support uh, with that person. So on the neck, that's what we would say. It gives support. It could be elders in your church. It could be people you work with. So all those, you can look at them as the support structures. And then sometimes it is the shoulders that a person may begin to see in your dream. So now... Um, I'll, 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 I'll read uh, some verses uh, in Exodus just to relate to the shoulders. Um, so if you look at Exodus chapter 29, verse 22, you find that when they gave sacrifices to the priest, they would give him the, the liver, they would give him the kidney of an animal, and they would also give him uh, the right shoulder of the arm that he would consecrate. Now, if you look at uh, Isaiah chapter 9, uh, verse 6, so that we get the shoulder into context. It says, For us, unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. So government is represented by shoulders, or governance is represented by shoulders. So the right shoulder would be the right government of God, or the governance of God. So now, it, it, it's beginning to tell you of a ruling structure. Whether it's in your life, the authority to rule, the Bible is saying the government shall be on his shoulders. His name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father. So again, if you go in Isaiah chapter 22, verse 22, it says, And the keys of the house of his father David will lay on his shoulders, and he shall, the door he shall open, no one shall close, and what he closes, no one shall be uh, able to close. So again, you see the keys is authority. We've talked about this in the earlier series. The key is authority. So the authority that was upon him, now he puts on his shoulders. So you can have a dream and you are carrying keys or you can carry different things, but maybe it, the Lord is telling you about a governance structure, a ruling structure, an authority or responsibility that a person is carrying. But then it could also be a negative uh, authority if you are Carrying, if there is an evil thing on your shoulders, maybe the Lord is telling you there is an evil ruling structure that you are carrying in your life. Say, for instance, you have gone to witch doctors, you have gone uh, to profiters to obtain uh, some powers in order to succeed. Then on your shoulders, there will be strange things. Maybe in your, on your bed, there will be black beds on your shoulders. There will be rotten things on your shoulders. Because maybe the governance structure that you are carrying upon that time, it is not the right authority, but it is the wrong authority that is ruling in your life. So shoulders are representative of governance. But that is not all about shoulders. We go to Genesis chapter 49 and verse 15. And it says, And he saw that rest was good, and that the land was pleasant, and he bowed his shoulders to bear a burden and became a servant to tribute. So this is Esaka. When he sees uh, that the reward is good, he brings down his shoulder to carry a burden. So Esaka prophets or Esaka intercessors, those who understand the time, they know when it's time to carry a burden to pray. So shoulders also represent burdens that people are carrying. So sometimes the the, the, the shoulders will be painful. Maybe people are 
carrying heavy burdens or maybe you are carrying a heavy burden and you could see it in your dream. Maybe you dream you are carrying loads on your shoulders and the Lord is telling you that you are carrying unnecessary burdens or maybe it's a burden that you need to bow down to and carry. So now the shoulder becomes something important to pay attention to. In your dream, what are you carrying? What burden are you carrying? Is it the right burden? Is it something that you need to offload? If you see in a dream a leader's uh, shoulder is broken. Maybe the ruling structure at that time has been broken. Maybe there is a breakage in the authority or in the governance structure. So if there is a, 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 a brokenness or the, the governance structure is broken, then you will have a dream and the leader, you will see his shoulders will be broken because if they are broken, then he has lost control of that governance structure, whether it's in a business, whether it's in a church, or is any system, if a leader's shoulders are broken in your dream, then the governance structure has been broken. And so pay attention to those things. And then also again, in Isaiah chapter 29 uh, verse uh, 4, it says, uh, For thou hast broken the yoke of his burden, meaning the Lord comes to break the yoke of his burden, the staff of his shoulder, and the rod of the oppressor in the day of Midian. So now you can see that a burden, an oppression, is represented by a heaviness or a weight on the shoulder, but God comes to break that oppression. So you need to pay attention to the dream. What is in my dream? What am I seeing in this dream? Is it a yoke that I'm carrying? Is it a yoke that somebody is carrying? And then you go to Isaiah chapter 10 verse 27. There again is, it says, It shall come to pass in this day that his burden shall be taken away from the shoulder and the yoke shall be broken from your neck and the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. So now we see that when the burden is taken from the shoulder, it means the burden is taken away from the governance system or from your life or the burdens that are ruling. Since Jesus said, come to me, you who are weary and heavy burdened, I will give you rest for your soul. Where would the heavy burdens lie except that they are on your shoulder? And now since we are saying shoulders are government, you also remember that normally when people have no burdens, they will live their lives according to the freedom that they experience. And those that are carrying heavy burdens, heavy weights or heavy sorrows, even their lives become shaped according to the burden that they are are carrying. Say for instance, we talked about the head in the last series. If somebody is mourning, normally when they are mourning, when there is a funeral, normally you will see that heads are cast down. Why are heads cast down? Because there is a burden on your shoulders. We can give another example when people are watching their teams playing the Africa Cup or World Cup. If their team loses, their heads will be cast down. Why? Because there is a burden of loss that is on their shoulders. If you look at the one whose team has won, then they will be walking with a head high. Why? Because the burden of loss is not on their shoulders. So you need to pay attention. What am I carrying in my dreams? Sometimes people have dreams. They are carrying strange children. They don't even have children, but they always in their dreams. You are carrying strange children. Sometimes it could be demonic powers that are manifesting in your dream. You need to pray and offload those strange demonic children that you are carrying. Somebody had a dream in which they were carrying a man and that man they were carrying on their back was already dead. And the meaning was that that person had died in their lives, but they had not allowed the Lord to process the loss. So because they had not come, even after so many years, they had not allowed the Lord. They were still holding on to that person who had died as though they were alive. So now they were seeing this man in their dream. And all the Lord said to them is that you are still carrying this burden as though uh, the Lord was not there to help them lift it up. So when they prayed and they released that burden, then in their next dream, that man they were carrying was no longer there. So sometimes people dream they are in houses. Like in this uh, period, we've looked at the dreams that most of the people have sent in. Some have sent in dreams. They are saying they always dream they are in an odd house. Maybe there is something that happened in that house. Maybe there was violence. Maybe you were humiliated. And because of the shame that happened in that odd house in your village, maybe you have not overcome. You are still moving in that pain. So you are carrying the burden of the uh, 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 of the past. So sometimes people dream they are always in that small house. Sometimes that small house is a burden you are carrying telling you that you have failed to move on from the past. Sometimes people are not willing to change. There are times that new things are being brought into your life, but you just want to stick to that old traditional system that you are used to. And because you are 
used to that traditional system. Even though you have moved from the village and you are now in town, you will still be dreaming that same old house that you have always been seeing. Some people carry the burden of their shame. Maybe you wrote exams and you failed at one point. And because you failed, you always have a dream that you are writing exams and you are failing. Why? Because it is a burden that is ruling you. And sometimes people have been disappointed in relationship. Maybe one woman was dumped by a man or a man was dumped by a woman. And because of that burden they are carrying on their lives, they can no longer go out and date somebody new in order that they can start a new life again. Why? Because there is a burden of shame on their shoulders. So in your dream, you need to look and see what burden am I carrying on my shoulders? What is this thing that is there that is troubling and pushing me. So now we begin to move away from the shoulders. We've done a wide discussion on the shoulders. We begin now to connect to the arms and to great strength. So now we, we, we've already said uh, shoulders are, are able to bear a lot, a lot. So now we come to the arm, the arms, and then we go to the hands. So now, therefore, said unto the children of the Lord, I am the Lord. I will bring you out from under the burden of the Egyptians. And I will rid you out of their bondage, and I will redeem you with a stretched arm and with great judgments. So now, the arm is where you have strength. So the arm will represent great power, great strength. But because God is saying, I will redeem you with my arm, that arm there represents the Spirit of God or the power of his presence. And the arm, because that's where normally when people have fighting, they use hands. Uh, of course, there are those who use uh, kicks, but now we are looking at arms, like in the case of boxing. So now you look at arms as the armies, the forces. So when he says, I will redeem you with my mighty arm, it could be that the Spirit of God, or he's talking about his angels of God, because when he says, I will redeem you with my arm, I will help you. When Joshua receives help in Joshua chapter 5, verse 6, the one that appears before him is the commander of the army of the Lord. And the army of the Lord is the angel. So when he comes to redeem with his mighty arm, sometimes it's his angelic force, his angelic movement, his great power that has come to deal with um, situations. In Exodus chapter 15 and verse 16, it says, Fear and dread shall fall upon them. By the greatness of thy arm, they shall be still as a stone and thy people shall pass over O lord till they pass over so now by the greatness of god's arm the enemies shall be still like a stone a stone cannot think a stone cannot move a stone cannot plan a stone is dead so in other words because of the manifestation of god's hand the enemies would be silenced and sometimes people have a dream and there is a great hand that is helping them a great hand that has come to their deliverance. Sometimes it's the hand of the Lord. Some people say, I had a dream. I saw this thing coming against me, but then a hand appeared and blew it out of the picture. It could be that the Lord was showing you that by my great hand, by my great strength, the power of the enemy will be broken. And so because the power of God manifested and stilled the enemy, we know that a hand will represent your power. So a, an arm also represents your strength, meaning that if you are seeing that your hand is broken in your dream, maybe the Lord is telling you that your strength has been broken, your power has been broken, or the enemy is trying to break your strength. So if your hands are broken, then you cannot fight, then you cannot work. So that ability is being taken away. So if your arm is in a plaster, Maybe there is an injury. It is telling you that the strength is being taken away. Not necessarily that your physical arm has been broken, but there is something that could be the strength in your life. could be spiritual strength or something else you rely upon for strength to, to gain victory that is being broken or tempered with. So then you begin to pray and ask the Lord how to deal with that thing. In Numbers chapter 13, 31 and verse 3, it says, Moses spoke unto the people, saying, Arm yourselves unto war. Let them go up against the Midianites. So they would take arms. They would get swords. And when they got swords, they would go uh, into battle to contend and to fight against the enemy. 
So picking weapons is also a sign of getting ready. So sometimes people have dreams, they are dressing up, they are preparing with weapons. Maybe God is saying to you, get ready for the battle ahead. Get your arms, set things in place because you are entering into a combat zone. So if your arms are armed with weapons, it is time to go to battle. So seek the Lord, ask him, let him give you wisdom. Lord, how am I going to fight these battles? How am I going to overcome? Because he's the Lord of the armies of heaven. So this is where we end the lesson for today. We'll continue uh, further as we go on understanding dreams from the body parts and symbolism that God gives us as we go on. So you can write us, post us your comment on Facebook. You can follow come follow on Peter Kansembe Understanding Dreams as the Facebook page. Or you can send your message, your text message to my number 0961-500-512. Or you can send your message to Radio Christian Voice on the WhatsApp line on 0960-200-490. Or you can post on the Radio Christian Voice your comments, your questions, and we'll get back to you. So until the next time, this is Peter Kansembe from Praise Christian Center. Shalom, shalom. You have been listening to Understanding Your Dreams, presented by Pastor Peter Kansembe from Praise Christian Center. For questions and contributions, get in touch with Radio Christian Voice and get to like us on Facebook, Radio Christian Voice. Tune in next week at the same time.